Many financial advisors recommend people max out their TFSAs before putting money in the more popular RRSPs. Why? Well, one reason is a loophole the federal government has left in the tax-free savings accounts that could make a big difference. So let's break down the numbers. This woman in her mid-30s living in Ontario makes $55,000 a year. Like most Canadians, she has no private pension plan outside of her own savings, so she wants to put away 10% of her gross earnings for retirement. If she puts it into an RRSP, she deducts that from her income and gets a tax rebate. Now, she needs to put that in her RRSP as well or she will come out far behind in retirement. Trust me on that, I'll explain later. So she's actually putting away more than $7,000 a year. If she opts for a TFSA, there's no deduction, no rebate, just the $5,500 a year. Now, moment of truth. Let's fast forward 30 years. We'll keep all amounts in 2015 dollars to make it easier. With conservative investments, she should start retirement with about $350,000 in her RSP. In the TFSA route, about $270,000. Like most, she plans on making her retirement savings last 25 years. From her RRSP, adding in CPP and OAS, she has a total gross income of $34,000. But now it's time to pay back that tax rebate she got all the way along. So she's left with just over $29,000 a year. With the TFSA, she has $29,000 a year gross. All of her taxes are already paid on the TFSA money, so she only owes on the CPP and OAS. But there's more. Remember that loophole I told you about at the start? TFSA withdrawals are not taxable because they don't count as income, meaning her reportable income qualifies her for the Guaranteed Income Supplement, all of it tax-free. So, with a TFSA, she could have nearly $9,000 a year more than with an RSP. As long as you have no other retirement income and this loophole remains open, it seems TFSAs are the way to go in the long run.